let's turn our attention to another useful client utility that ships with MySQL. It's called MySQL Admin. Its sole purpose is to permit DBAs as well as junior DBAs the ability to administer MySQL D daemons. So rather than logging into a shell, an interactive shell using the standard MySQL client, we can use for more common features such as shutting the server, reloading the privileges, which is equivalent to flushing the privileges, changing the password, and so on, the MySQL admin daemon. So, let's discuss MySQL admin. Again, it allows us to administer MySQL daemons. This is a useful tool because picture in a large environment one or perhaps two or a few DBAs who need to perform common routines across multiple servers. Ideally, if you had a utility such as MySQL Admin, you'd increase the amount of work or efficiency by allowing users to connect and perform routine operations rather than in a batch mode, rather than connecting in a terminal interactive mode and issuing the same commands, thus reducing the likelihood of errors and increasing consistency as a result. So MySQL Admin is the tool for DBA, Junior DBA repetitive tasks. Let's quit this particular interface, we'll clear screen, and we will run MySQL Admin in its most basic mode. Now let's show you the syntax before we run it. Syntax is as follows. MySQL Admin followed by options, followed by command 1 through command n. Simply se separate your commands by spaces and MySQL admin will perform each of the commands sequentially. So command 1 first, command n last or next. Very simple syntax but there's a lot that admin can do. For example, we're connected to the local system so it's quite easy for us to tell whether or not MySQL is running. A PSAX grep will tell us if that's the case. We should see it in the process list. But what if we're on a remote system? Let's connect out to as root Linux CBT Media 1. And once on Linux CBT Media 1, we no longer have a process listing for the local system. So what if from the remote system we want to be able to quickly determine whether or not Linux CBT DB1's instance is up and running? Well, if we use MySQL admin followed by the proper syntax which includes user in this case the user would be root or some user who we define such as a user called Linux CBT but we need to ensure the user has the proper privileges so let's go with Linux CBT followed by a password of ABC123 which will ensure a set followed by command 1 such as ping and the ping would determine whether or not the remote systems up and running we're unable to access the remote system and we haven't specified the host. In fact, this is checking locally. So let's specify the host being Linux CBT DB1 and see whether or not we have enough privileges. We do. Now, just in case you're wondering what privileges are required to perform a simple ping, the fact that the user is able to log in is all that's required. So let's do a show grants locally. And by the way, we can use MySQL admin to tell this information as well. But let's MySQL in as the user root password abc123 to the local system and execute a show grants for Linux CBT and you'll see that Linux CBT is really just an anonymous user so if we attempted to use from the remote system elevated privileges such as reload it would fail but to be able to determine whether or not the server is simply up and running is a simple privilege and the ability to connect is all that's required we don't need the ability to access a database just simply the ability to connect so we can tell as a junior DBA or even as a non DBA whether or not the server is up and running using MySQL admin and the ping option here are some more useful options what if we wanted to ping because we suspect that there are connectivity problems you get a use a call from a user who says or a user of an application that's contingent upon the MySQL database who says that the application seems to be responding intermittently so you need to perform a test from your node on the network to determine if that is indeed the case the admin utility supports a few key features including count so somewhere in here we can specify a count we'll set it let's say 
to do it five times. We could even specify an interval, such as a sleep time. So we can have it ping five times, that happens very quickly. But what if we want it to ping five times, but to sleep for a couple seconds, such as two seconds? We'll then specify that it should sleep for two seconds. So it pings first, sleeps, two seconds later it'll ping again, sleeps, two seconds later pings again, sleeps, and so on, for a count of five. And this gives us a little metric to determine whether or not the server is responding consistently because after each two second sleep the server should respond promptly and if it doesn't it could indicate that there's some underlying network connectivity problems so count and sleep are useful options we'll just place these in our configuration actually let's just take this entire string it matches the syntax that we've laid out and in this case we've run a ping, a basic ping as a non-privileged user with a count of five and a sleep interval of two. The intervals are measured in seconds by the way, so the count is an, in, is an integer but the sleep is measured in seconds, so it sleeps for two seconds. Great. What if we wanted to list the processes that are running on the remote system? Well, instead of using count and sleep, let's get rid of the count and the sleep, and instead of using ping, We'd simply run MySQL admin with the process list option. Let's go ahead and specify that, but what you'll see shortly, and here you have it, is that the process list that's returned corresponds to the user who logged in, Linux CVT. This user is a non privileged user as evidenced by the output from Show Grants which means that the user cannot return process information for other users on the system. For example, if we were to look at the process list internally, you'd see that it would show way more information. A show process list will reveal any additional connections. We're currently logged in as root, which is the second connection, whereas before we logged in as Linux CBT, but we were unable to list root's connection. So there really should be two connections. Connection ID 79, which was the connection we use for showing the process list, as well as connection ID 76. So because we don't have enough privileges to view other processes, they don't return. But at least we're able to see what we're doing on the system as a non-privileged user. We can also list variables that are configured. Let's remove process list and show you the variables. These variables are currently configured on the server. It doesn't require any special privileges to read them, but do require privileges to set them or to reset them. These are all the variables defined, alphabetized, of course, including whether or not compression is supported, which we looked at earlier on as one of the options that we used, connection timeouts, and so on, date formats, etc. Great. What else can we do with MySQL admin? Well, we can also kill connections. Let's say there's a connection on the server that is occupying way too many resources. We use MySQL admin followed by the kill command. Basically, the MySQL syntax is, or the admin syntax is, you run it with the proper username, proper password, followed by any number of commands separated by spaces. And those commands really explode or expand to longer commands. But the admin utility provides us with shortcuts. Now we won't be able to kill connections as a non-privileged user. Show grants shows that the privileges aren't enough. But if we were to grant elevated priv privileges, it would work. Now before we grant elevated privileges to the user Linux CBT, what if we granted a specific privilege such as reload? to the user Linux CBT. Then that user could use the admin utility from a remote host, let's just get rid of one of these windows to avoid any confusion, could use the reload option of MySQL admin to flush privileges. What if we granted the shutdown privilege? The user would then be able to shut the server. These are some of the things that we can do. We can grant reload, grant flush, grant pretty much any privilege that's supported by MySQL and the admin utility would check to ensure that that permission is permitted and as a result allow it to occur. Now the easiest way to see permissions in action is to grant a user full permissions. So let's go ahead and grant all on star dot star. Again if we do just star it would apply just to MySQL the database itself. Star dot star means the entire DBMS to Linux CBT 
at percent of course identified by ABC123 and we terminate with a semicolon we will then rerun show grants for user Linux CBT and you'll see that the user now has all privileges instead of simply usage privileges now that remote user or Linux CBT logging in locally or remotely can perform any of these features so from the remote system if you execute MySQL admin you'll see what is actually possible here are some of the possibilities these are the commands we can create and drop databases all remotely let's try to create a database we'll create a new database let's rerun MySQL admin and instead of showing variables let's go ahead and execute a create and the name of the database we should come up with one let's create tempdb2 before doing so we'll do a show databases you'll see that there exists information schema MySQL tempdb and tests let's go ahead and create tempdb2 and an echo of the exit status shows it was successful which means a rerun of show databases will show the new database tempdb2 because the user had the proper privilege to do so let's go ahead and create multiple databases create tempdb3 followed by create tempdb4 to show you that multiple commands are possible simultaneously and then a show databases will show 3 and 4 as well as the original 2 we could also drop those databases simply exchange or substitute for create drop and then those databases will be dropped as well let's drop four as well as temp db2 now we're prompted because dropping a database is something that is considered to be dangerous and could cause corruption and loss of data so let's go ahead and for each database confirm that we want these databases to be removed the echo of the exit status reveals that all ran well but we should confirm as a user logged in on the remote system that the databases have been wiped and they have been so we are prompted for confirmation when dropping databases because again it's considered to be something that isn't necessarily ideal because it could cause corruption and so forth Again, we did mention that we could kill connections, but the processless program, or the processless option of MySQL admin will tell us the connections that we can kill. So let's attempt to list the processless again as a privileged user this time. Notice 76 shows up, 84 shows up. 84 was the connection ID that we were granted for connecting using the admin utility. 76 belongs to the user who's physically logged in or actually on the box but what about killing that particular connection ID well simply execute kill no differently than when you're in a terminal environment followed by the ID if you want to kill multiple connections just separate them with commas kill 76 followed by the next number followed by another number the echo of the exit status shows that it ran successfully let's rerun the process list again notice the connection has been killed on our local system however if we press enter we're still logged in but this time with a new connection ID so the MySQL server has gone away really is an indication that someone else broke the connection so the client reconnects the reconnect feature of the client is a default behavior that is provided with the MySQL client and can be disabled but it is the default and the connection was cleared Let's rerun that process list again, and now you'll see that roots bound to 87 instead of the previous connection 76. Let's go ahead and kill the connection again. This time we're going to kill 87, followed by process list. So we can run multiple commands, first the kill, then the process list. So we've killed, and now there's only one ID, 89, which was used to actually kill the connection as well as enumerate the process list when it's all said and done if we try you'll see when we execute show databases that we had to establish a new connection ID of connection number 90 so MySQL admin is useful in many ways now we did mention you could change password we show you that earlier on it's quite simple simply execute MySQL admin and you specify all the defaults that we've been specifying but 
you then specify the password command. These are all just commands which get expanded to the full command. So password really becomes a set password. Password, new password, is the syntax. So password followed by new password, but we need to substitute for new password the actual new password. Currently we use ABC123 to connect as Linux CBT, but we could set it to XYZ123 simply using MySQL admin from the remote system. Now of course it throws an error and let's attempt, oh, in fact the host, it threw an error because we didn't specify the host, Linux CBT DB1 and now it runs nicely. So it threw an error because we didn't specify the host. But if we attempt to connect listing the processes that are running on a remote system by executing process list with the old password, let's see what happens. It doesn't work because by executing the password feature and then followed by the new password the privileges were flushed, which means we need to connect using the new password, which is XYZ123. And now it works. There's the list of connected users. You can also, as mentioned, kill multiple users who are connected at any time. Now what about the idea of flushing privileges? Well, that's simply the reload feature. If you execute reload, it flushes the privileges. So if one has executed an update statement, but has neglected to flush the privileges, reload will take care of that for us. All this information is logged, by the way, by MySQL. So ping is a very basic feature. We can kill, we can count, sleep, etc. We can create and drop databases all using MySQL admin. And for more information about what this utility can do, just simply execute it. You'll also see that it does process the global file as well as the local user's home directory file if there are any options and it reads either the MySQL admin or client sections if they're present and these are options that can be specified in that file we can shut the server entirely let's say from the remote system Linux CBT Media 1 remember we're on the second system which is across the network albeit connected via gigabit connectivity but nonetheless it's across the network we can instead of reloading just simply shut the server let's execute a shutdown you may very well want to do this Let's say you suspect that your system's being targeted by hackers, an internet facing system. You could use a MySQL client or the admin client from a remote system and just execute shutdown and the server will shut. Let's try it. An echo of the exit status reveals that it was successful, but let's confirm it. And you'll notice that from the local system, even when we try to do a show databases, the client cannot reconnect. So we're forced to quit the client and then we'll net stat NTL, you'll see that port 3306 is no longer listening, and a PSAX grep of the main process shows that it's no longer running. So in order to get it running, we'd have to actually run RC MySQL start. But before doing so, let's attempt to connect from the remote system. You'll see it doesn't work. Can't connect. And the exit status is no longer a zero exit status because the server doesn't exist. So let's start the server, and then we can connect and execute queries such as show me the variables currently running on the server. So these are some of the things that we can do remotely using the admin utility. The admin utility takes into consideration some of the common routines that are run by administrators and makes them available by these one line commands. And as a result, the admin utility will inherit additional commands based on the requests of DBAs out there who rely upon MySQL. So use the admin utility for common things such as changing passwords for users, as well as shutting the server, reloading privileges, checking the variables, pinging it to see whether or not it's alive, killing connections, creating and dropping databases.